Good morning, everybody. I'm Ms. Basma Kelisli from Brazil Mufteta School. I'm going to teach 12th grade students today. Unit one, the topic of our unit today is the law. In this lesson, we are going to answer some questions about the text, international rules of law, correct some false statements about the article, and match some words with their meaning. Then we are going to complete some sentences with words from a list. Now, first of all, let's talk about the law. What is law? The law is the code or set of rules which controls or governs all individuals in society. Now, who makes the laws in most societies? Of course, governments make the laws in most societies societies. Now, why do we have laws? Laws are so important in each society because it's, uh, it's important to control people and to make sure that people who do bad things are punished. Now, the Geneva Convention. Have you ever heard of the Geneva Convention? What is it? Is it important? Why is it important? How many countries have signed the Geneva Convention? Is Syria one of them? Now let's discover the answers to all of these questions by reading the following article. Okay, now before we start listening to the article, we have a question. What is the Geneva Convention? Okay. Now, you have to find the answer to this question while listening to the recording. Let's international Rules of Law The Geneva Convention is a set of international laws that protect injured soldiers and civilians during war. The law makes sure that every person is treated well and with respect. The first treaty was written in 1864, but it is often changed due to different types of war. It was significantly updated in 1949 after World War II. Syria is one of 200 countries in the world that agrees to follow the laws of the Geneva Convention. The agreement is important because during war a country might need help from neutral organizations to care for the wounded. The Red Crescent is one of the organizations that provides aid during times of war. It also helps injured people during peacetime, and you may have seen ambulances with the red crescent symbol in the street. Okay, so what is the Geneva Convention? It's a set of international laws that protect injured soldiers and civilians during war. Now you have to find some words in the text which mean the following. The first one. People not in the army. Now, what do we mean by the army? It means the military force. Look at the following photo. Here we have the Syrian army. Okay? Now, what do we call people not in the army? We call them civilians. Now, the second one. What is the word that means a formal agreement? First of all, what do we mean by agreement? If you have the same opinion as me, we say that you agree with me. So, what is the word that means a formal agreement? It's the word treaty. Now, the word modernized, it means to make something modern or updated. Now, what do we call people in the army? Let's look at the photo again. What do we call those people here? Or what do we call each one of them? Of course, each one of them is a soldier. And they are soldiers. Now, the, fourth one, the fifth one, used by a number of different countries. When something is used by a, different, a number of different countries, we say it is international. Now, the sixth one, help. Help means aid. The last one, to say that you have the same opinion. If you have the same opinion, it means that you agree. 
with me. Now we are going to listen again to the, uh, the same recording, but before we listen, we have some questions. I will give you the questions and you have to try to find the answers while reading. The first one, when was the treaty modernized? The second question, why is the treaty important? The third one, what is the Red Crescent? And the last question is, why is the treaty often changed? Now try to find the answers while listening to the recording. International Rules of Law The Geneva Convention is a set of international laws that protect injured soldiers and civilians during war. The law makes sure that every person is treated well and with respect. The first treaty was written in 1864 but it is often changed due to different types of war. It was significantly updated in 1949 after World War II. Syria is one of 200 countries in the world that agrees to follow the laws of the Geneva Convention. The agreement is important because during war a country might need help from neutral organizations to care for the wounded. The Red Crescent is one of the organizations that provides aid during times of war. It also helps injured people during peacetime, and you may have seen ambulances with the Red Crescent symbol in the street. Have you found the answers? Okay, let's see the first question. When was the treaty modernized? Here we have the answer. The treaty was, uh, the treaty was significantly updated in 1949 after World War II. So this is the, uh, the answer. Why is the treaty important? What do you think? Why is the treaty important? It's important because during war, a country might need help from neutral organizations to care for the wounded. Now, what is the Red Crescent? The Red Crescent is one of the organizations It's one of the organizations that provides aid during times of war. Now, why is the treaty often changed? It's often changed due to different types of war. Now, we have some sentences and you have to decide if these sentences are true or false. And you have to correct the false ones. Let's see the first sentence. The treaty was written in 1949. Is it true or false? Look at the text again. The treaty was written in 1864. So, it's false, but it was modernized in 1949. So the answer is false. You have to replace 1949 with 1864. Now the second sentence. Around 200 countries, including Syria, have now signed the Geneva Convention. Is it true? Here in the, in the text, they said that uh, Syria is one of 200 countries. So it means that Syria, that uh, we have 200 countries and Syria is one of them. So this statement is true. Let's move to the second part of our text. Here we are going to listen to the second text, but before listening, we have a question. What is forbidden under the rules of the Geneva Convention? Let me first of all explain the word forbidden. Forbidden means that you are not allowed, it's not allowed to be done. Or, uh, for example, it means uh, banned, okay? Now, what is forbidden under the rules of the Geneva Convention? Try to find the answer while listening. Let's listen together. Countries who follow the laws of the Geneva Convention must not attack civilians and they are not allowed to fight someone who is already hurt. It is illegal to ignore these rules, and a country found guilty of committing war crimes will be tried in a court of law and can be severely punished. All soldiers, civilians and prisoners may receive medical help from doctors and nurses. 
They can be taken to a hospital without being attacked. Food can also be given to people involved in a conflict. Under the Geneva Convention it doesn't matter what religion, gender or nationality a person is or what his political views are, if someone is sick he must be treated without prejudice. Okay, now what is forbidden under the rules of the Geneva Convention? First of all, it's illegal to attack civilians and to fight someone who is already hurt. We have some difficult words in this paragraph. Now find words in the text which mean the following. Very harshly. What is a word that means very harshly or to the highest degree? Of course, it's severely. Now the second word. It means responsible for a crime. Now what do we call the person who is responsible for a crime? We call him or we say he is guilty. Now the third one, negative, negative attitude towards people who are different. What do we mean by negative attitude? When you treat someone in a bad way because he is different from you, like for example he has a different color or for example he has a different nationality or religion. So what do we call people, uh, what do we call Negative attitude towards people who are different, we say it's prejudice. The fourth one, place where a trial is held. Look at the following photo. This is the place where a trial is held. Trial means judgment. Okay, now what do we call this place? It's a court. Male or female, here we are talking about the sex of the person, if he's a male or a female, and it's gender. Now, we have the same paragraph, but we are going to answer some questions about it. The first one, how does the Geneva Convention help the victims of wars? The second one. What does the underlined word in the second line refer to? I mean the word they hear. The third one, who can get medical help from doctors? Try to find the answers to these questions while listening to the text. Countries who follow the laws of the Geneva Convention must not attack civilians, and they are not allowed to fight someone who is already hurt. It is illegal to ignore these rules, and a country found guilty of committing war crimes will be tried in a court of law and can be severely punished. All soldiers, civilians and prisoners may receive medical help from doctors and nurses. They can be taken to a hospital without being attacked. Food can also be given to people involved in a conflict. Under the Geneva Convention it doesn't matter what religion, gender or nationality a person is or what his political views are. If someone is sick he must be treated without prejudice. Okay, now the first question, how does the Geneva Convention help the victims of war? It protects, injured, uh, it protects injured soldiers and civilians, and it provides aid such as food and medical help. Now, what does the underlined word in the, tech, uh, in the second line refer to? Look at the, the word here, they. Let's read the sentence. And they are not allowed to fight someone who is already hurt. Now, what do we refer by they? It refers to countries who follow the laws of the Geneva Convention. Who can get medical help from doctors? All soldiers, civilians, and prisoners can receive medical help from doctors and nurses. Now, are these statements about the article true or false? If we have false statements, you have to correct them. The first one. Countries that ignore the terms of the treaty are punished. Now, what do we mean by ignore? Ignore means not paying attention.
attention to something. Okay. Now, countries that ignore the terms of the treaty are punished. Is it true or false? Of course, it's true. The second sentence, if you are an injured soldier, you will not be given aid. Is it true or false? Of course, it's false. How can we correct this sentence? If you are an injured soldier, you will be given aid. Now we have finished the text. Now we will move to vocabulary. Now match each of the words from A to D with two of the meanings from one to eight. We have four words. The first one is case, core, fine, and mean. Each one of these words has two meanings. We have to match the two meanings to the correct word. Let's start with the first one. The first one is a noun and it means money paid as a punishment. For example, if you drive without insurance, the police officer will give you, give you what? He will give you a fine. So the correct word is fine number C, or letter C. The second one, it's also a noun, and it means the subject of the police investigation. Now, let me explain the word investigation. Investigation means the process of collecting information about a crime. So, the subject of the police investigation is case. So, number, letter A. The third one is a verb, and it means to signify. Okay, let me explain the word signify. If you don't understand your word, for example, you say, what does it signify? Or you ask, what does it mean? Yes, the word that we want is mean, which is letter D. Now the fourth one, it's a noun. And it means a place where people play tennis or squash. Look at the following picture. Here we have the place where people play tennis and we call it a tennis court. Here is the place where people play squash, and it's called the squa uh, a squash court. So the correct word is court, letter B. The fifth one is a noun, and it means a container for carrying the luggage or papers. Look at this. What do we call it? We call it a case. So we have to match it to letter A. This word is an adjective, and it means unkind. Okay, let's look at the following picture. This is unkind person, okay? Now, and it, is, it means also not generous. What do you mean by generous? Generous man is someone who, uh, who, who likes giving people things. Okay, but we are talking about not generous person. Not generous, not generous person is a mean person. So we have to match it to D. Seven, it's an adjective and it means high quality or good. Like for example, the weather. Okay, now if you are in a good condition and I ask you, how are you? You say, I'm fine. Yeah, the word is fine. So we have to match it to C. Eight, it's a noun. And it, it means the place where a trial is held. We have seen this photo before. What do we call this place where the trial is held? We call it a court. So we have to match it to letter B. Now we have another question. Use one of the words in one. From A to D, twice in each of these sentences, we have four words, case, court, fine, and mean, and we have two meanings here for each one of them, and we have to put the same word twice with two meanings. The first one, the, the judge in charge of the carried all his documents in a black leather, black leather what? The word is case. The second one, 
the heard that the crime had taken place on a tennis. Have you found the word? Yes, it's the word court. So the court heard that the crime had taken place on a tennis court. The third one, the weather. How can we describe the weather? Okay. The fine weather made me feel happy, but my mood changed when the police officer gave me a fine. The last one, what does this word, if you don't understand it, you say, what does this word mean? Yes, is the opposite of generous. We have come to the end of our lesson today. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you will get benefit from my lesson today. Goodbye.